So let us begin. Okay, hello everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. So now we are having the joint seminar for group two and three. And the topic is uh, daily chess routine at home. Basically, what we should be doing at home. Now this I have covered probably three, four times already, but probably for different groups. And also we have a very fluid uh, participation. So many of you could be new as well. So first thing first, um, uh, for those of us who are ambitious in preparation, who want to become good players, the first requirement is uh, you should love chess. That is a basic requirement. If someone wants to become a professional in music or in soccer or in computer science, you should like that field, isn't it? If I don't like history and I become a history professor, I won't be good at it, isn't it? If you have to be a good history professor, then I should like history. So similarly, uh, so if you see the name of our program, it's called Pro Chess Training. What does pro mean? Professionals, right? So we are hoping that the audience, they want to, at least in terms of chess improvement. So typically a professional is someone who makes a living out of that activity. So a chess professional means uh, the person is actually making a living as a chess player. But uh, we are not talking about that alone. We are also talking about just uh, trying to get better at this. Okay. So assuming that all of you want to get better at chess and willing to do what it takes to improve, and assuming we all love chess very much. Uh, so then this whole session will make sense. If you are just um, here for hobby and uh, curiosity, then you may not get much from today's session. Okay. So those of you who want to improve, and like chess very much. It's for them. Okay, so <clears throat> the first thing is um, we don't. I used to think like uh, if someone is twenty six hundred, they are very strong and uh, they don't have any weaknesses. It's almost like a god or a robo uh, or a machine. No mistakes. Something like that. I used to think. But then when I became a grandmaster and realized I make so many mistakes in my analysis, in my games, then first that bubble got busted that grandmasters don't make mistakes. No, grandmasters also make mistakes. Then I used to think, okay, maybe I'm a lower rated grandmaster. So someone who is 2,600, they don't make mistakes. They are very strong. Then when I became a coach, I started working with players about 2,600. I gradually realized they are also making mistakes. They are also having most of the issues which players at the lower level have. And then I thought, okay, maybe 2,650 is where the mistakes stop. Then that bubble also got busted. Then 2,700 <laughs> and it, life goes on. Okay, so the point to realize is uh, we come, like, when we see movies like Spider-Man or uh, Hulk, right? So the Hulk comes and then dishum, right? One dishum and then million people fall down, right? So, and then hero always wins in the movie. Hero never loses and everything ends happily ever after, something like this. All have a happy ending. 
so most young children who watch all these movies and cartoons they come to chess thinking chess is like that i just go and do dishum to my opponent and then opponent falls the next opponent comes and then another dishum <laughs> okay but it doesn't work like that okay so we are not hulk and our opponent is not some cartoon character in a movie they are also human beings with a brain just like us okay so <clears throat> now first thing we have to realize is if just because we see movies and in the movies heroes win and we think we are heroes we are not going to win <laughs> okay so it is going to take much more than just wanting to win to win actually so what are the things required first thing you must uh, realize that at our level we don't know many things okay now when i read on twitter facebook and all what i see is like people who are totally unqualified um giving professional opinion opinions like a professional on every topic under the sun now if you ask me any question on any topic i will of course have an opinion okay but it is just my opinion and most of the time it will simply be wrong what is this oh okay so if you ask me some question on max or geography or biology <laughs> or physics or chemistry i will have my opinions but most of them will be rubbish and i will not dare to express it in public okay but on social media we see all this happening now why i am saying this now with the same way we should not come to chess field and then when a position is given we simply express our opinion okay it's like why to play what we should do ah we should play this move okay this is an opinion opinion means you think about something in a particular way okay so suppose i ask which is more dangerous lion or tiger okay and someone says lion and someone says tiger this is an opinion okay so i may think many things on every topic and that is an opinion got it clear now understood what opinion means okay so now when we are playing chess we should not play with our opinions okay i think this move is right and uh, just a few minutes ago i just concluded a session of review positions and many players in even in simple positions instead of putting the effort to analyze and then coming to a conclusion we are just expressing opinions okay so i have lot of years experience as a player and lot of years experience as a coach and uh, i still feel like if someone asks how to help someone get rid of time trouble let's say someone is getting into time trouble problem or someone is confidence is very low then the, if they ask my help then uh, i would be very hesitant because i don't know i only have an opinion i don't know the answer if someone says i'm getting into time trouble how should i get rid of my time trouble i can only give my opinion okay it's not the truth it's not proven that what i'm saying is correct whatever i think is correct is just my opinion so but if someone asks for my opinion i will give my opinion okay so do you understand what i'm trying to say what am i trying to say so we have opinion on everything and if i show any chess position and for example if i show some position and ask what to play now we have uh, 47 participants apart from me okay we may get close to 35 opinions 
<laughs> okay in same position everyone will think this is the best move that is the best move okay so we cannot play chess on opinions this is what i am trying to convey so the point is you have to realize when you look at a position and you like some move then that is simply your opinion just because you like something does not make it right yes kiana okay so if you think g4 is good that does not mean g4 is good it simply means you think g4 is good maybe some g4 is bad maybe something else is better okay this is always possible okay so when we look at a position we like some move we should realize this it's simply i like this it may be completely bad move yeah so if you ask two lawyers you get three opinions okay <laughs> yeah in every language you will have something like this okay so <clears throat> that means you have to be more responsible so if you play a move and it turns out to be wrong then it is our mistake i should have checked things carefully before i played this move now i did not do that properly i did not check my own move hence i made this mistake okay so this is the first thing you should realize then the next question is follow up is if i like some move then what should i do should i not play the move simply because i like it is that what i am saying no what i am trying to say once you see a position you like it keep it as option 1 or just check it okay continue don't stop the analysis continue the analysis start the process and then you will see if your analytical skills are good then maybe you will see a good move for the opponent which will prove our move was bad okay this can happen or you may prove that your idea is actually good then you should play it okay so now there is a message in the chat i still don't understand why your suggestion about time management is opinion and not a professional advice after so many years as a coach um so um what i see is like uh, this is what i am okay uh, how i don't know how to say this for example even though i have lot of experience as a player even though i have lot of experience as a coach even though my students have done well blah 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 all this and i feel that i am right on many things i do realize it is still an individual's opinion okay i went to a doctor today uh, to a ortho doctor bone doctor i have some problem in my fingers okay so i went to an ortho doctor who is extremely experienced okay he has been treating for many decades 3 4 decades or 5 decades and he said uh, um like 5 years ago all the doctors in the world thought this is what we should do for this problem but since then in the last 5 years opinions a different opinion has come <laughs> okay now they feel instead of this we should treat it like this okay in such a scientific field like medicine and this is a very popular doctor with lot of experience and he says like 5 years ago till 5 years ago every doctor was doing this but now they are doing differently for the same problem okay so professionals realize even professionals have only opinions they are not 100% right i'll give an example very easy to understand today candidates is happening right and so many great players are doing commentary do you think they are not checking with engine before telling the moves or they are checking the engines what do you think hmm so peter lego is or uh, peter swidler 
or I don't know, Hikaru Nakamura. <laughs> They're all very strong players, right? Or Fabiana Garuana. So many good players. 2700, 2750. Hmm? Most of them, they are checking. <laughs> okay. Um, right? Why? Are they not good players? Are they stupid players? That's why they check engines. Are they not good players? They are fantastic players. Why do they check engines? Don't they have opinions on any position? Don't they have any opinion? Don't they know how to analyze? Don't they know how to find moves? So do you understand? Do you realize that even very strong players, they check with engines? Okay, because they know even though they are very strong, they are very likely to make mistakes. Do you understand this? They, are, they can miss many things and they are capable of making mistakes. And this we are talking about players about 2750. Okay. And compare us with them. How is our How valid is our opinion? Now compare my opinion with theirs. theirs. They are much stronger than me. Right? So, <clears throat> this should make us humble. Okay? So, we should not think just because I see something it or just because I have an opinion, it is the right thing. No. We are very easily, we could be mistaken. Understood? So, now, coming to the preparation, what are the different things we need to do at home? So the first thing is to realize we know very less. Okay? We know very less and there is much more we need to learn. There is so much out there that we need to learn. Okay? So for that, how do we learn? By practicing chess and for that we have to spend time okay now there are different categories of players adult improvers and uh, young children people who are going to work people who are going to university people who want to become world champion people who want to touch 2000 in once in their life so different people with different ambitions out there but I'm approaching this from pro chess training. Pro. Okay. Someone who wants to improve and is willing to do what it takes. Okay. So for such players, I would say you should spend more time looking at chess, thinking about chess, the quantity. Okay. You should see, spend a lot of time practicing chess. The quantity is important. Okay. So now, how much time to prepare? It's up to you. Okay. There is no formula that you have to spend this much time. So, recently, I was attending a seminar by some of the top coaches in different sports in India. Other sports uh, top trainers had come. And there were some physiotherapists, sports injury, blah, blah, blah. So a lot of uh, top guys were there. And uh, everyone is saying, you have to practice, practice. And uh, the common thing everyone was saying is 10,000 hours. Okay, you to become a professional in anything, you have to spend 10,000 hours of vigorous practice, good practice, before you become very strong in that field. So... Um, if you do three hours of practice per day, if you see three hours chess, in 100 days, you would have seen 300 hours, right? In 300 days, you would have seen 300 into 3, 900 hours. So in a year, we have 365 days. So 65 days, we will have to go to school, give exam, or we go to friend's house, holiday, blah, blah. So 65 days, I leave it aside. So remaining 300 days, you prepare 3-3 three, three hours. You would have done 900 hours in a year. Right? So instead of 900, I would say 1,000 hours in a year if you prepare 3 hours a day. So 1,000 hours 
you do in one year if you practice three hours a day, every day. And how much practice you need? 10,000 hours. That means for 10 years, if you practice three hours, okay, then you can become maybe an IM or a GM level. Okay, so what they are doing, so what the professional, one of the professional was saying, so you have to do five and a half to six hours of practice a day and you have to do this for five to six years to become a professional. So he was basically saying five and a half to six hours you have to practice every day. So let's say six hours and uh, you can do this in five to six years. Okay, so now you should ask yourself, can I spend that much amount of time on chess? For some of you, yes, you are already doing it. For many of you, no way. <laughs> I have other things to do in life. Isn't it? So, you have to decide how much time you can spend and based on your time availability and also based on your ambition level. Okay, but generally I would say more ambitious you are, spend more time recently i tried to quantify it so i'm saying again this is just my opinion okay no scientific experiment or nothing just my view so 2300 if you want to reach three hours a day you should practice 2400 if your aim four hours a day 2500 that is gm five hours a day <laughs> 2600 six hours a day. 2700 7 hours a day, 2,800, 8 hours a day, something like this. Okay, so you higher your ambition, more hard work you have to put. That's all I'm saying. I don't want to quantify it with numbers. But to just give you a rough idea how much effort it takes to become a good player, I'm just putting some number which has no scientific basis, my personal opinion. Understood. So the quantity is important. Now for those of you, who are not putting this kind of effort because I have heard many young children say, I want to become a world champion. At least I would have heard maybe 5,000 kids. <laughs> okay. In the last 25 years, I would have heard at least 5,000 kids minimum, more likely 25,000 or something. Children say, I want to become a world champion. I'm yet to see a world champion. <laughs> okay. And uh, I ask how much time you spend. They'll say 45 minutes to 48 minutes per day. <laughs> okay. So basically they think like you can spend 45 minutes, one hour like this and can become world champion. <laughs> okay. So you see what kind of opinions we have, how stupid, op how, how stupid they are, right? Our opinions. So, so, Jian, <laughs> you are asking a crazy question. So, Jian is just going back. So, 2300, 3 hours. 2200, 2 hours. 2100, 1 hour. So, 2000 means 0 hours. <laughs> is that what you want me to tell Jian? <laughs> okay. So, forget about this. Okay. The point is, the more ambitious you are, more time you should spend on chess. Not only practicing chess, just thinking about chess also, you should do it. Okay. I'm currently working with two groups of, one group of children, two days, twice per week. I take the class at six o'clock Indian time in the morning. Okay. Six to seven. And some 10 children are attending. I just started this group recently. And these kids, they have to get up at 5.30, 5.45 in the morning and attend the class. And then within half an hour, they should go to school. So that's why we fix the time like this. So they can go to school after the class. So I'm very happy that they are getting up so early to learn chess. Okay. So this kind of determination, commitment, Okay, is required. Okay, you have to take ownership for your improvement and say, 
if I have to do well, I have to learn so much. And to learn so much, I have to put corresponding effort. Okay. So the quantity, I leave it up to you. How much time you should spend? I've given you a rough idea. You think based on your ambition and time availability, how much time you should be spending. The next is on what? What should I be doing? Okay. Now, <clears throat> here again, basically what we are looking for is the key. So if you want to become a good player, you should be good at everything. Isn't it? We cannot say I am good in... So in olden days, like Petrosian was very good in positional chess and end games and he became a world champion. Michael Tull was good in attack and he became a world champion. Okay, but nowadays, if you are good in one thing, you it's very difficult to become a world champion. You have to be good at many things. Okay, so what are these many things? Okay, so in which areas I should be working on? In which areas I should become good? Okay, so one is calculation skills. This is because calculation you have to do in the opening, in the middle game, in the end game. So this is something that you have to do throughout the game. Okay, but not in every move. Wherever there is something to be calculated, you must be good at calculation so you are able to do it. Okay, so calculation is something each and every one of you should focus on. And how to get better in this? One, you can solve puzzles. Now, where do we get puzzles? There are many books. I believe in the WhatsApp group chat also. Uh, we have posted uh, some book recommendations. I have posted some book recommendations on my Twitter twice already in the last one or two years. Recently also, I don't know, some days ago probably, I posted about the books. If you are curious, you can read it. So there are, see, what you have to realize, like capable, like Michael Tall or Ali Kain, they were very good in calculation. They were very good in tactics, in attack. How did they learn? Okay. They did not have too many books. They did not have computers, database, internet, coaches like us. And they still managed to learn these things. Okay. When they did not have so much information, they st without so much information, with what little information that was available to them, they learned the game and became very strong players, isn't it? So Rubinstein, he played amazing in games. And he was doing this in 1920s like that. Now we are in 2020, 100 years later. Now you tell me, 100 years ago or now, when we have so much access to information? Now, obviously, yes. In 2024, if you say, I don't know which book I should read. <laughs> okay, is this fair? Tell me. In 1920 or 1905, if they say, I don't know how to learn in game. I want to learn in game, but I don't know how to learn in game. We can say, yes, it's not possible for you to learn in game easily. Because there are no coaches, no books, no database, nothing. But we can't tell that in 2024. Okay. So what information you don't have, tell me. Everything is available in plenty. Right? If you want a book on attack, you can get 100 books on attack. On any opening, you have so many chessable course, quality chess preparation, chesspublishing.com, modernchess.com, chess informant, mega database, chess space magazine. So many. So you just have too much information. Okay. So we should not complain that I don't know how to improve in this area, which book I should read. Okay. You have to find your way for this. So don't expect that for every doubt you have, every problem you have, Others should come up with a solution. Okay. So if you don't know how to, from where I should solve puzzles. Okay. Then don't wait for 10 years. 
until someone comes and tells you solve puzzles from this book okay so till then i will not do anything don't be like that okay try this if that does not work try that that does not work try something else you have so much access to information okay so you can easily find out which works for you okay so <clears throat> you have to improve calculation one you can solve puzzles and this is available in many websites chess.com leechess.com chesstempo.com there must be many other websites i don't know any website you feel comfortable is fine and two there are many puzzle books thousands of them in the market you can just google get opinion and find it and uh, the next is study and analyze games of good attacking players okay start with players from the past because after the arrival of computers the game of chess has become more difficult and the defensive skills everything has become much better but in olden days it was usually strong versus weak and to learn something it's good to see one sided games where one side makes mistakes the other side punishes so that way we will learn what are the type of mistakes we should avoid and if our opponent makes those mistakes how to punish so generally take one strong versus weak and that is possible easily in classics so start with uh, old players like morphy alikain uh, they are all good attacking players michael tall etc okay so he can you can uh, take good attacking players games and analyze their games don't just see games okay try to find the moves of the winning side yourself this is very important whenever you are seeing a game so even let's say today the candidates is starting in india it will be like midnight the game start but let's say in other tournaments they start at normal human hours so when you are watching games of good players even when you are watching games live my suggestion if you really want to improve chess first turn off the engine okay so till you become 2200 2300 2400 2500 i would recommend not to use engines okay don't use something just because you have it okay just because we have something doesn't mean we have to use it okay so <laughs> leave the engine for professionals okay my suggestion don't even touch engines wherever suppose you have a chess based software uninstall all the engines okay don't have stockfish uh, i don't know lila chess i don't know what other engines you use just remove everything from your computer and when you are watching games in chess.com or lee chess automatically they will have the engine thing no turn it off okay turn it off and uh, evaluation bar and all it goes like this right like some eeg graph turn that off turn everything off okay and if someone is commenting mute it okay you don't need to watch games with commentary so in the candidates if five five boards are playing okay so if five boards are playing 5 into 2 10 players now it's eight players so four boards right four different boards so what you can do in your screen you can have all the four boards open okay keep all the four boards open turn the notation also off okay turn the notation also off and then what you do you keep a chess board in front of you okay keep a chess board and uh, put the whichever game you want to see okay and then you try to find the move yourself now let us say if they have already played in the first board if they have played 20 moves and that's when you are logging in what you do quickly go to the first move okay and then you choose either white or black whichever player you like suppose you like white player so put the white pieces on your side and then keep five six moves both white and black moves put all the five six moves on the board okay and then from fifth to move or sixth to move you think okay like you are playing in the tournament okay so no commentary no engines 
notation if you see then you will see the move what they played right so turn the notation also off and then you think okay so if you get this position against that player okay so today gukesh versus prag now if you like gukesh you keep gukesh side on your pieces on your side and then you try to find Gukesh move. Suppose you are playing against Pragnananda, what you will play here. Okay, you think. And then in your mind, you come to your conclusion. Okay, if I am playing this portion against Pragnananda, I will play this move. And then you see what Gukesh had played. If the moves are matching, then you are happy. Yes, I got it. But if the moves are not matching, okay, Gukesh plays something else then don't immediately turn on the engine and see your move is right or Gukesh move is right, all that. Okay. Just ask yourself, like, why Gukesh move is better than my move? Okay. What, what if, why Gukesh move is better than my move? Or why Gukesh liked the move he played and not my move? Why he did not like my move? Why he liked the move? he played so he must have seen something good in the move he played isn't it if Gukesh plays a move he sees something good in that move that's why he's playing okay so you ask yourself what is the good thing that he find about this move why he likes this move so much that he played it okay and try to understand which principle he is following or if he has calculated some variation which variation he might have seen to choose this move like that Okay, now when you are doing this, most of the time, our moves, which we like, and the strong player's moves will never match. <laughs> okay, now what do we do? Now, we should not think that I am such a bad player. I am always finding bad moves. Don't think like that. Okay, be use common sense. Now, what is your rating? What is Kukesh rating? If you are 2100 and you are seeing a game of a 2750, can a 2100 find the moves which 2750 will find? Obviously not, isn't it? So don't even have that expectation. Okay, so when that expectation is not met, getting upset is pointless. Okay, so then what are we trying to do? If all my moves are going to be wrong, why should I even do this? Hmm? So, because only when you think, analyze, and take decisions, you will learn to think, analyze, and take decisions. You get my point? Without thinking, without analyzing, you cannot learn how to think, how to analyze, how to take decisions. Understood? So, what a chess player has to do when you are playing in a game you must think, isn't it? That's why they give you whatever time they give on the clock because they want you to think and take decisions. So first requirement, think. And while thinking, what are we thinking? We are trying to analyze the position and find which is the best move, right? And finally, you have to take a decision. This is good, this is bad, and then play a move or reject a move, right? So thinking, analyzing, taking decision. This is what we have to do while playing a game. So in training, this is what you should do. Whatever you have to do in a tournament, you should do it in training. Okay. So <clears throat> this way, if you see, you will learn much more. So when you are following four games, or let's say you are seeing chess Olympiad. I don't know, maybe 1,000 games are played, right? On a daily basis, you cannot watch all 1,000 games. See as many games as you can. Now, what you can also do, if you want, you can have chess base and in the first board, okay, open an empty board, you enter the moves as they play and then you think and you spend 30 seconds, one minute, two minutes on Gukesh Pragnanda game and then you see, okay, if I am Gukesh, I will play this move, okay. And then what you do, open another board, empty board and then take the next game, okay. Take the next game and then you try to find the move for the other game. Understand? So like this, you can do multiple games. So when they are playing, they are thinking, right? 20 minutes, 30 minutes, someone will be thinking. In that time, you find moves for this game, 
you find moves for the other game, you find moves for the other game, you find moves for the other game. In every game, you are thinking, analyzing, and trying to find moves. If you do this kind of, uh, if you watch strong players games like this, you will improve much faster. You will actually learn how to analyze. Now, if someone is telling you, this is how you should analyze, okay, you will not learn how to think like that. Okay, imagine if someone is tying a rope between two buildings, okay, two high buildings, he is tying a rope and then he is having a stick in the hand and he is walking on the rope and he is giving live commentary. You see, this is how you should walk. This is how you should balance and see, walk, 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 walk and he goes to the other side. Now, can you do that? Can you do that? Because he has told you everything, all the top secret he has told you, right? How not to be afraid, how not to lose balance. If you lose balance, how you should regain the balance. Everything he has taught you. Now you have heard everything. You have also seen how he actually does it. So you have seen, you have heard, you know all the steps. Can you do it? <laughs> okay, forget a rope. Can we do it even in a ladder? <laughs> we can't. Right? So just by hearing things, seeing things, you learn nothing. Okay? You will just gather information. And that is what most of us are doing. Okay? So that is for amateurs. Okay? Who are just curious what is going on. So they need all this to keep them entertained. But if you are aspiring to be a professional, you don't need anyone's help. You just need access to good players' games. That's all. If you have access to good players' games, you analyze, 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 and become a good player. As easy. Okay, can we try doing this from today? Turn the engine off. Close the notation. Mute. And uh, if you are seeing only one game, you keep a chessboard and think. Okay. If you are watching multiple games, then in chess base, you open multiple boards, you enter the games, and you think in this game, then bring the next board, and you think in this new this game. Everywhere, you are trying to find moves. Okay. This is the best way to see chess. Uh, I will try. Can you please show how we will do it in chess.com? To place close notation, I don't know how to do. Okay, so you want me to show actually how to do this. Let me try. <laughs> One minute. So let me screen share. Okay, so I'm using chess.com and screen sharing. Okay, and maybe I will show here. Yes. Now, if you see here, they have this option, right? I don't know. It says some small grid something. Right? This one. So it shows all the four games. Now, this evaluation bar is there, but I don't see the notation. Okay, maybe I'll come down. Yesterday's game. Okay, this is yesterday's game. Okay, let me just click this. Oh, it opens. Okay. Uh, oh, I understand your point. How to see multiple games? Is any chess.com expert out there? I go back. Okay. How do I see multiple games? Click on grid. 
ग्रेड यस लार्ज ग्रेड मीडियम ग्रेड स्मॉल ग्रेड विच वन आई शुड चूज लार्ज मीडियम आई कैन जस्ट ओपन इन डिफरेंट टैब्स यस ओके सो लेट्स डू दैट सो आई एम यूजिंग वन टैब ओके देन ओपन अनदर विंडो सिंपल राइट and you make it as small as you want it right and then uh, i can choose another tab isn't it i can open the next game but i think these things and all you can find a solution isn't it okay so tastan says it is there in uh, uh, leeches they have multiple boards i am sure chess.com will also have multiple boards okay um but again now this is what i this is also something um how to close the notation right uh, like you can just resize the tab windows chrome chrome or safari whatever you are using isn't it you can resize the thing in a way just cover it or if you use five four tabs use one tab to cover the notation something like that no you just need to find a way okay again uh, we should not take a position that if i face a small problem then i will call the fbi and call for a solution to my problem <laughs> okay solve my problem otherwise i will not prepare <laughs> no find a way okay we are in 2024 okay we should have that much capability right to solve the problem what you should have learnt from what i said today is simply don't use don't listen to others views okay everyone says oh this move why did he play this move why did he not play that move okay we don't think like that when you play in a tournament game isn't it you have to be very calm right you cannot get so excited okay and uh, you have to find the most yourself if someone is seeing the engine and giving explanation you can do that yourself too you can try hmm? turn the camera on and uh, turn the engine on and then you just see the engine move and share your opinion in words you will be a commentator too okay so you have to think if you want to become a good player unless you think you just seeing hearing will only gather information it will not improve your chess skill so see a lot of good players games solve puzzles you can study classics this is very useful in my view okay studying games of players from the past because as i said in many cases it will be strong versus weak most of the games the weak player will make very instructive mistakes which our opponents will also make and uh, they'll make instructive mistakes and the strong player will punish now carpo will play against some 2400 player okay so people are sharing links let me see uh, okay go to watch and then the events you will see the candidates tab to hide the notation you can keep it in standings okay as i said please find a solution for this yourself okay it's not some huge problem in my view okay so study classics solve puzzles and if you are over let's say 1600 or 1800 fide rating you should also start solving studies or compositions okay two three studies a day will be very useful to improve your calculation solving puzzles solving studies watching good players games you can do live you can watch from the classics and there are many good books right from olden days like my 60 memorable games by fisher or uh, fighting chess by kasparov chess at the top by karpo 1953 zurich international by david bronstein think like a grandmaster by alexander koto S studies um, yeah. practical chess uh, i forgot the name there are so many good books 
okay you can just search in google top 100 books in chess something like this okay and randomly choose any book and study okay studying books and learning from them is a very good way it's a very personal experience and what is my opinion about puzzle rush okay <laughs> okay serious players will not do it but uh, like I know many like uh, Arvind Chandram, Karthik and Mulli and all, they used to do Puzzle Rush, not anymore. When they introduced it, it was fun. They were competing for the points, but all that is just time pass. Okay, so while in lows, what would be the daily routine you would recommend? It doesn't matter uh, whether you are playing well. If your result is fantastic, you should work hard regularly. If your result is bad, you should work hard regularly. So irrespective of your form, whether you are in good form or bad form, you must prepare regularly. Okay. So only the topics you choose should be according to your form. So suppose you are in bad form. Okay. Then try to find out why you are in bad form. What are the types of mistakes? You, because you must be doing something wrong, isn't it? Maybe you are getting into time trouble. Maybe you are playing too fast. Maybe you are not concentrating well. Maybe you are the preparation you do at home is not enough. Maybe you are not working in many areas, just doing same stuff. One common mistake many players do is they do two or three things and every day they do the same two or three things. Solve five puzzles, play 10 blitz games, revise one opening, something like this. Okay, don't get into a same routine which you do day in and day out every day you do the same stuff it will get boring and your learning is not diverse enough so you have to jump between different topics you sometimes you have to work on end games sometimes you work on attack sometimes you work on calculation sometimes you study classics sometimes you solve puzzles sometimes you solve studies sometimes you're working on prophylaxis sometimes you're working on peace improvement so there are many many topics now, if you want to know which topics you have to learn, I can recommend two books. One, Yusupov series. You have uh, um, Build Up Your Chess, Boost Your Chess, Chess Evolutions. Nine books total, three volumes in each of the topics. So nine books. And each of the topic, if you just go to Google, they will have topics in the chapter list, right? In the introduction chapter, they will give the chapter name. So each of that is a useful topic. That can be one clue on which topics you have to study and learn. And uh, there is another book by Constant, Constantin Landa and uh, Sakev, a two-volume book on positional chess. I don't remember the exact name. Okay, they also have many chapters. So just the chapter names could be the areas you have to work. Okay, so uh, whichever area you feel you need to improve or you feel very curious about, oh, I want to learn this, then learn that, then go to another topic and so on. Work on multiple topics. Okay, you can do multiple books at the same time also. Okay, one thing, when you are in good form, you can uh, work on topics which are difficult for you or topics which you don't like much. When you are in good form, your mind is very receptive. Your mind is very positive. So tackle the difficult things when you are in good form. When your form is bad, you are not playing well, your results are not good, your confidence is low. At that time, don't do difficult things because you are mentally, emotionally not ready to do difficult things. Okay, so there, do things which you like. Okay, work on topics which you like, which you think you are good at. Okay, so when you are in bad form, stick to your strengths. When you are in good form, explore your weak areas or difficult areas. Okay, so someone says, I don't have confidence in myself. So I recalculate so many times, get it to time trouble. Uh, so and this is more common than you think. Most players who get it to time trouble this is one of the main reasons why they come into time trouble. They don't believe in their own analysis. So they check and recheck again and again. So one thing you can do is uh, work harder on your chess skills, improve your chess skills, because 
the more stronger you become a player more confident you will be okay if you are getting stronger and stronger in your chest strength you will feel more and more confident only when we are not improving our chest strength then our confidence will be low and when our confidence is low all these problems will come so you have to work hard and improve your chest strength this is one second you can play training games you take some interesting portion from a book and then play against a human not against computer it will demoralize us you try to find some players around your rating maybe 100 points or 150 points above you and uh, you take some interesting positions and then uh, play with them in let's say i don't know 15 plus 10 15 minute game with 10 second increment something like this so a very complicated position and then are a very interesting end game and you have only 15 minutes for the game okay so less time you play a lot of interesting positions and uh, maybe you will get that confidence to play interesting positions with less time also okay so uh, i am 2070 uscf do i need multiple openings for both colors not at this level so let me put it things in perspective when i came to chess in 1990 or so the minimum rating the basic rating was 2200 fide okay 2200 so there was no 2190 or something the minimum rating is 2200 so from that perspective if you say i am 2070 uscf it's as good as unrated player 30 years ago right so should an unrated player learn multiple openings in multiple colors not necessary okay so if you play have a narrow repert- repertoire it's okay but provided it is not all sidelines if you play only sidelines and you play only one sideline everywhere then it's a problem if you are playing some main lines then it's okay you don't need too many choices at this level focus more on your analytical skills middle game skills and end game skills not on learning new openings okay fine so anyway the session is recorded um you can if you have some if you forgot something you can rewatch the recording and if you have any doubts put it in the whatsapp group uh, in the process training and we'll be happy to clarify okay how to remember lines try to revise more times and tell yourself i must remember these things i have to memorize okay Fine. Take care, everyone. Bye, bye. Thank Adios. you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.